on here. My name is Jay Kremke and I am the product manager for SUSE Linux for HPC and also SUSE Linux for ARM. Uh, and so we've actually been on a long journey as well. In fact, John and I have commiserated a bit about uh, walking, being in the wilderness for a long time, uh, but that time is finally here with, uh, with the announcements that we've had from, from Cavium and Qualcomm. Uh, to give you an idea of where, uh, where we've come, come from, I mean, certainly a lot of this is built on partnerships. So we've had a long partnership with various folks out there, particularly around ARM, uh, the HPE, uh, ARM itself, Cavium, Qualcomm, Cray, Microsoft, and many, many others out there have actually been part of our ability to deliver SUSE Linux for ARM. Uh, we also have a very good partnership with the OpenHPC community. So the OpenHPC community today uh, is building uh, on top of SUSE Linux Enterprise 12, uh, on top of a Cavium Thunder platform, sorry, Thunder X platform. So that's uh, an important part of it, and as you'll see, uh, OpenHPC also forms the basis for some additional offerings that we provide. Uh, and that's, uh, that's something we call the HPC module, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. If I can get this to scroll down. No. There we go. Uh, wow, that really doesn't show very well. Uh, let's talk about SUSE Linux. Uh, as far as ARM, we shipped our first release of SUSE Linux Enterprise for ARM last year, in November of last year, so it's basically been a year now. Uh, we supported a number of different SOCs, but we did support the Cavium Thunder X uh, in that initial release, as well as uh, some others. And uh, you'll see a, a, a little bit clearer chart that's not in white on green uh, in the next slide. We were really focused on doing the base enablement. Uh, we picked the 4.4 kernel. Uh, we were running the 3.8 kernel before that, but we shifted to the 4.4 kernel because we really needed stuff in there. Uh, one of the other things that we had to do is our normal default tool chain uh, has a lower level of C. Uh, we moved up to the 6.2.1 uh, through our tool chain model as a way to, uh, to build that. Uh, you'll notice then further down, there's something called the SUSE uh, SLES 12 HPC module. Uh, this module is basically a way for us to package a select set of HPC packages uh, that are actually part and covered under the SUSE Linux Enterprise subscription. So in other words, you buy SUSE Linux, you get the HPC module supported automatically. And I'll give you some details on that. We started out with a relatively uh, small number of packages that we supported in that initial release. We just added more of them today. Uh, one other thing kind of important there is that we also support, support SUSE Enterprise Storage. So SUSE Enterprise Storage is our Ceph-based software-defined storage option uh, offering, and we provide that both for x86 and for ARM. So that's been out uh, basically since the first quarter of last year. All of those products have now been out there for quite a while. Uh, in August, we released our second major release of SUSE Linux Enterprise for ARM, and that's Service Pack 3. And that's very important because it did pick up the Cavium Thunder X2, as well as the Qualcomm Centric 2400, and a few other SOCs. So that was important. We kept the same kernel version. We've uh, been doing quite a few backports uh, in order to support that. Uh, and then following on to that, I did release uh, today, uh, we just, just announced that we're coming out with some additional updates to the HPC module. Now, moving forward, we already have our first beta of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 15. You'll notice that we skipped 13 and 14 for various reasons, okay, cultural, cultural reasons. But we do have SLES 15 out there. That is going to be based on the 4.12 kernel. So that initial beta is out there today for ARM, 4x86, Power, and Z. And of course, we do use the same kernel across all of this. We use the same source across all of the different platforms. Uh, and we're also planning to have additional updates to the HPC module. Uh, in the most recent update for SLES 12, uh, we did add, as I mentioned, we added the Thunder X2, uh, the Octeon TX, and, uh, and the Qualcomm Centric, as well as a number of other SOCs. Uh, one of the challenges that we have in the ARM community is that the strength of ARM is diversity. Uh, the, the hard part of ARM is the diversity, right? You have lots and lots of different 
uh, vendors, different people creating silicon for different sets of purposes. And so that uh, is a bit of a challenge for, uh, for us in product management. Uh, I want to talk just briefly again about the HPC module. So as I mentioned, these are included in the SUSE subscription. So if you have a SUSE subscription, then you're able to get support for these modules. Uh, you can see in this chart, I've got, uh, I've got some that we released in the first quarter, and now we've got an additional set in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, some very popular things like Slurm are in there, uh, but we continue to add new packages to this. Uh, our engineering team has been doing an excellent work figuring out the complexity of how do you ship these things and how do you avoid uh, library collisions and things like that. So this is something that we think is very important to our customers, and we're going to continue to build on that. Uh, just as a side note, we do have, I mentioned SUSE Enterprise Storage as being an ARM-enabled product that's out there today. Uh, we have a SUSE Manager product that uh, we're going to enable very soon for ARM. Uh, SUSE Manager does things like fresh installs as well as keeping software maintenance up to date. So those are kind of the things as you move into a data center, you really need those type functions. Uh, we've also been working on SUSE OpenStack Cloud. We've had it in tech preview for quite a while. To be honest, the real thing that's been holding us back is we've been waiting for the market to really coalesce and start to demand that support. So, you know, we're at this point, we have two major releases of SUSE Linux out for ARM, uh, and we're kind of broadening out our other product lines for the ARM platform. As I said before, couldn't do this without, you know, without a lot of help from a lot of partners. This is just a partial list of the partners that we've out here, have out here. And uh, one of the ones that's on here, Cadence, is kind of interesting. Uh, that was some of the work that we did with Qualcomm. Qualcomm obviously wanted to have Cadence, uh, and we helped, uh, helped Cadence get their, get their, uh, their platform uh, over to the ARM platform. So that's really important that we're starting to see commercial products that are really starting to embrace the ARM platform as well. And that's all I have. So, questions? No questions? Thank you. We're, we're trying to do a good job here. You know, if you notice, I limped a little bit. I went hiking with John yesterday. And I think John wanted to slow us down a little, so you know he kind of broke me. But <laughs> you didn't kill me though. <laughs> yes. One simple question: Is Raspberry Pi? Yes, Raspberry Pi is out there. It is 64-bit. It's the exact same kernel. So if you want to run the same kernel on the mainframe on the Raspberry Pi, that's out there today. So if you're interested in that, just search for Raspberry Pi and SUSE Linux. You'll find that it's currently at the SP2 level but we do have some kind of interesting plans for that as well. Thank you for that plug there. <laughs> All right, other questions? No? Okay, thank you very much.